What is going on, guys? It's Adam A.K. Marv. Today's show is going to be packed. We're going to talk about everything that is going on. Of course, China saying that they are going to take Taiwan by any means possible. This is a, There are actually big movements being made right now. We'll talk to you about that and what our groups are saying. And then, of course, we'll talk about everything else going on in the last 24 hours. A lot has happened. So stick around. We'll be right back right after this. Nothing in the show should be considered legal, medical, or financial advice. The views of the callers can differ considerably and do not necessarily reflect my opinion, Dex's opinion, or anyone else who works with the show. You should always do your own research and consult with professionals. The internet is full of fake news, so please take everything with a grain of salt. If you have not already, it helps us out if you end up going through any of our affiliates, and it helps you out if you end up protecting yourself against cybercrime. NordVPN is one of the best and one of the easiest to use. If you do not have a virtual private network, it protects your IP address, which is your online identity, which actually connects to your real address and everything else. It also connects to you. If you know anything about how they are data logging and basically getting your profiles down, you can prevent that by having a VPN. Nord is, again, one of the easiest. Download it. It's like an on switch and off switch. All you have to do. Go to marfuglenews.com slash VPN. Not only will you get a giant discount on this, but you will also be helping us. I appreciate your support, and I appreciate everyone that goes through any of our affiliates. Uh, can't say thank you enough. All right. What is going on, guys? It is Adam, A.K. Marf, and this is Marfugal News. We have a lot to cover in a short amount of time. Uh, remember, if you are not getting notifications exactly when we go live, make sure to go to marfugalnews.com and get those alerts. You can also get email alerts from us, uh, which we uh, send very, very sparingly. We make sure that it is very, very important when we do send you e emails. Uh, now, let's uh, go over just in case there are new people in the chat. Usually, we have anywhere from 2,500 to 10,000 watching at any given time. Uh, so, I want to make sure that people know you can get any of the sources from all all of the stories today on our website. When you go to marfuglenews.com, it's very easy to navigate. Just look for today's thumbnail, Taking Taiwan by Any Means Possible. And once you click on that, you will see that we have linked every single article, video, tweet, document that we're going to show you here, uh, we give you the access to. So you know exactly where your stories are coming from. Every single link is there so you can follow along. You can grab a second device. You can go back and check my work. And, and then again, you can... Uh, uh, make sure to, to go back. And this is all archived. It's actually searchable. You can go up to the search bar. And if you remember a show, but you can't think of uh, exactly the show it was, you can search any keywords up in the upper right hand corner. And then you'll find the show that we were talking about it. So then you can share it with your friends. Uh, and then over on the right, if you do want to support us, we are truly independent. We do not have a multi channel network. We don't have a multi billion dollar company. We have you, uh, you and a faulty algorithm. So remember, you share this stuff out. Press Press the like button, press subscribe. Uh, if you are watching this and you're not subscribed, honestly, just uh, think about the value you get from the show. If, it, if it's greater than the effort it takes you to push the subscribe, then make sure to do so. Uh, let's bring in my co-host slash who will be on the phone slash internet brother slash amazing guy, Dex James. What is going on today and how are you doing? Well, hello, Adam, and hello, Fugle fam. I'm doing just fine. So, uh, thank you. I, I didn't even notice. So, Dex overheard me say the web only content uh, to highlight it or something, and Dex just went and did it. So, so the web only content, which I'll save, uh, Dex, that's awesome. So, what can you explain the the bottom real quick? I know that we'll go over it at the end, but yeah, certainly. So that's that's the entire other show. Everything we can't cover. Too hot for TV. Two sided. Too whatever didn't make it in the initial list it's there there's an entire show in and of itself it's uh web only content very cool and then at the bottom caller info so people that will call 2244 marf and get into the show uh will be placed there if they have a channel if they have a article that they suggest or they just uh you know called in with breaking news we'll put any uh related information down at the bottom all right so lots to go over we're going to talk about china of course in a second uh, it's pretty much, I mean, they are saying it's absolutely 100% happening. So 
We're going to see how this goes. Uh, again, we, we'll talk about that in a minute. But first, it says the U.S. Space Force unveils new uniforms and reminds people it still exists. The uniforms had social media drawing comparisons to Star Trek and Battlestar Galactica. So they actually look pretty cool if you've seen them or haven't seen them yet. It says the U.S. Space Force unveiled new prototype uniforms for its service members Tuesday and it drew a plethora of reactions on social media. Some compared the uniforms to those worn on sci-fi shows and others were stunned to learn that Space Force still exists. Uh, I don't know, you know, for that part right there, it's like... Of course it exists. And guess what? They didn't delete it or get rid of it once T-Man was out of office. So obviously it wasn't, you know, just T-Man sitting on the throne saying, oh, let's make a space force. There were some reasons uh, why they had that done. There were reasons why they brought in Elon uh, all of a sudden. And there were reasons why all of these meetings went on in, in 2017, 2018, uh, just so much went on. Uh, by the way, just kind of floated around that same time that all of the solar observatories were shut down and, and it, you know, a pa uh, Black Hawk helicopters swooping in to, to get some, uh, some, some guy that supposedly had stuff on his computer and shut down and evacuated the whole neighborhood for what they said in the end didn't really make sense. Uh, around that same time, we had false missile alerts in Hawaii. We had all sorts of crazy things going on. Uh, we also had, in that same kind of time frame, uh, Russian sailors in a submarine, a top secret, non-weaponized, or they don't know what's exactly on it, a research submarine so secretive that they don't even know what's in it. Uh, they, uh, 17 people died in a fire on that submarine. And then at the funeral, the general said that uh, those sailors died avoiding uh, a planetary catastrophe and that they were heroes. So we still don't know what the hell the planetary catastrophe was. Uh, again, there was a lot of weird stuff in those la those two years. Well, in that time, the Space Force was created. And at that same time, Starlink was announced. Starlink was to be this grid for internet for everybody. And back then I said, I don't think it's just for internet. And then now, just recently, a few months ago, it slowly leaks out that, oh yeah, we're going to add sensors to Starlink uh, that will be able to sense hypersonic speed objects, whether that be a hypersonic missile or a meteor. So there's something bigger going on here. I That's my belief, and that's mo uh, most of the people watching this show have that as well. But if you're new here, just understand that uh, we talk about it just everything. And you should be able to come here and talk about, you know, you should be able to talk about your feelings without people saying you're dumb for what you believe in. Uh, that includes the complete opposite of my views. If, if you have those views, as long as you're polite about it, we should be able to go back to old school. Remember, if you're getting triggered by something, then you're playing into somebody else's game. That's honestly how it is. Uh, they they want everyone divided. As far as Space Force, of course, it's still around. Uh, people thought, you know, made fun of it because of the president who did it. And basically, anything that that president did, they pushed back against. Uh, what is weird, though, is he did the thing. And when uh, when he suggested that, you know, we all take this thing that they're, you know, making everybody take, uh, it was funny because... Uh, when he pushed that, media was like, no, I'm not going to do it. In fact, the same people that are saying, you know, go get it, uh, at that time were saying I would never do it because he's, he's, it's his thing, right? And now, of course, uh, 180, everybody. So Space Force, as far as everything that's going on, these uniforms look pretty trippy. Um, it, we're in this brand new world, right, where soon we'll have space tourism and people will be going up to space. This is such like a crazy thought to even be in this world, like if this comes true, because I know that there's people in our audience that uh, may not believe that we'll, you know, make it to the moon or make it anywhere because there's uh, beliefs out, out there and uh, they're prevalent, right? But soon it will be pretty hard to hide it unless something massive happens. So either way, something is, th things are going to change a lot. Uh, again, it says, so you're really going to make the Space Force uniforms look like Battlestar Galactica, huh? One user tweeted, and then somebody else says, I like how the Space Force is embracing the ridiculousness of its existence and just rips off of science fiction, another added. So, uh, Dex, uh, the, the one picture that shows only shows like the top half. Could we get a picture of, of what the, if, if there's any other pictures of these new uniforms? And then I'll move on to the next uh, next article here. 
Yeah, I'll look for something. And then TikTok is under fire over devious uh, licks. Viral challenge inspiring students to vandalize school bathrooms, which uh, I'm surprised that, you know, they, they call this out, but they don't call the 10-year-olds and 12-year-olds uh, rapping and dancing to a song that is uh, just absolutely suggestive and disgusting talking about doing things that are literally illegal for that age group. Uh, but then, of course, they call this stuff out. Uh, it says that a new destructive TikTok craze has teens stealing and damaging property at schools. The challenge has spread here locally with districts from New Jersey to Connecticut reporting thousands of dollars in damage while issuing warnings to students and parents, uh, CBS 2's Christina Fan reported Monday. From stealing school supplies to trashing bathrooms, students went around the country are jumping on a viral TikTok trend. Parents and teachers are quickly getting a crash course too. It says, quote, I was completely unaware of this phenomenon, but lo and behold, the very next day we experienced a form of mild vandalism. What is this vandalism, you ask? It says, uh, a day after his son warned him about a challenge called Devious Licks last week, someone caused $400 in plumbing damage to the boys' bathroom. It's not good. They need to shut this down. They need parents of the kids to come in and explain. This is a serious matter, parent Florencio Hernandez said. It says in, uh, it says that, um, Hold on, let's get back to what it actually is. It says, theft and vandalism are glorified, literally. The viral videos depict as heroes the students who are stealing. The social media site that says that it's already taken steps to shut down the trend by removing content. Uh, it says, if you search the hashtag devious lick, licks, a message appears saying no results found. In Halidan, those responsible f well, were disciplined. Superintendent said that key to preventing future vandalism lies within kids. So one thing that it says, and I looked, uh, I tried to find this, and it it uh, does it even say it, it doesn't even say what the heck it actually is. Uh, it, Dex, did you see any of the videos before we loaded these? Because it, it it I I couldn't find any. Uh, it says that it does not appear, but I can't find what they were doing in these bathrooms that was uh, horrific, right? Yeah, so I, I talked to a school, a, a former administrator, or not administrator, but uh, maintenance worker from the school system, and he was talking to all his friends. And basically what they've seen, at least here with the TikTokers, is that they're, you know, ripping sinks off the wall, um, breaking those uh, partitions in between stalls kind of thing, um, just doing, you know, general damage in the, in the bathrooms. And, in, and then the other thing was uh, theft. So taking things and so doing it as part of a TikTok was uh, what they were doing. And that, you know, that's just locally here. That story is not about here because it's I guess it's a, you know, a trending thing everywhere. This. OK, so this garbage has to stop. I don't know what these idiots are thinking. If you've actually seen some of these TikToks, uh, one of the ones where I actually saw somebody calling it out. Uh, there is a TikToker I like. He basically calls out other stupid TikTokers. 25 year old man sits in the middle of a busy uh busy grocery store in the produce aisle and he shakes up a two liter throws it 50 feet up in the warehouse high uh, ceiling and then has it crash down and then it busts and it shoots across the the whole place now a two liter if if that has is under pressure and that hits somebody in the head it could have sent them to the hospital if you see the video uh, it, it dangerously flew uh, it's incredibly fast, and that much liquid in a bottle is a weapon. And it's like this kind of thing they do because they want a couple licks, uh, you know, a couple um, not not uh, licks. They want um, they want likes. They want all this other uh, attention from this. And this is actually how social media has trained the young kids. Uh, they only get this kind of, uh, I guess, verification through social medias. My 15-year-old daughter is the same. It's been a struggle uh, since she got a phone. Almost every kid has a phone now. And, you know, there's some parents that say, well, that's why I don't get them a phone and they can get a phone when they have their own. You know that now they have made it to where uh, if a parent takes a phone in some states, you can actually, they can uh, say that that's some sort of uh, neglect or abuse by taking a child's phone now. 
And we're talking about small children. There's been cases in several states. We've covered those stories where the mother or the dad were ended up, uh, you know, looked at badly because they took a phone away from a child. Now, these phones, it, they've done studies. They know for a fact that these phones are dangerous to, to our, our health and to everything else. But yet, what about the social media experiments that is every single person with the cell phone? You're probably watching me on a cell phone and you understand that these phones are extremely addictive. Now, one of the, the you know, you can get good things from it. It's kind of like in the wrong hands, it's a bad thing. Now, these dumbasses doing these things... This is horrendous. Like, why would you be stealing stuff? Why would you be doing this stuff? And they're encouraging it with this platform. But what are we going to do? Are we going to uh, start screaming and yelling and then uh, cancel? And then all of a sudden, they're going to change that platform and, and restrict it more and more and more. It happens almost with every platform. Dumbasses like this get the platform uh, restricted and restricted and restricted. And then soon, you can't post anything like most of the, the older platforms. Then it's so restricted, there, there's no right answer. How about we don't let things, you know, like that. It, it's just like this This needs to be fixed from the top level, from parents. Parents need to teach your kids like this isn't funny. Have a sit down talk with all of your kids and say, hey, if you're on TikTok, I got to walk you through. There's some dumb people out there that are going to be posting stuff like this. Don't go and do it. I mean, it's, it's we need more. I guess we need more parenting. Because you can't expect the uh, company, which is supposed to be a legit platform that lets you post whatever, you can't expect them to completely stop this stuff. It's people's actions. What do you think? Put your opinion down below. I'd love to hear. Is there any solution to the the uh, young girls doing what they're doing, uh, to the kids, to the grown adults doing these stupid actions for likes? This is our society and it's going down the toilet. Meanwhile, they're not paying attention to anything uh, political, anything rule changes, anything else. Our next generation is really heading into a disaster. We've got, uh, you know, we've we've got literal people uh, that are growing up and then, you know, the very small percentage act like this and then go on to rule our country. That's that's scary. La Palma volcano opens a new mouth, forcing fresh, uh, fresh evacuations. So one thing I was going to say last night is somebody uh, again said, uh, oh, this is 12 hours old and it was a minor eruption. This can last upwards of 10 years. Any eruption this that takes this long in between uh, can last years. This one did do some minor eruptions or, or eruptions in the 70s. But it still could be a bigger eruption. It can also do a small eruption and then a week later have a massive eruption. Uh, this, In this case, it actually opened up a new mouth and it says as uh, 3.8 magnitude earthquakes rock the island forcing fresh evacuations amid warnings of poison gas clouds when lava reaches the ocean today. So this happened as well with uh, Kilauea. When Kilauea happened, uh, they had this poisonous cloud type thing happen uh, in that case as well. Uh, Dex, uh, I and I. By the way, I was going to remind people get, if you do want to get the phones two two four four zero zero Marf. That number is down below. M remember to do that. Uh, Dex, when you are not on the phone, um, just pop in whenever and and feel free to interrupt me. I was just going to check on. Uh, if there is any updates as far as what is going on there and and if we could check and then Lisa uh, hey Adam yeah you know it continues uh, obviously this is this is an update from today and it's continuing to grow and I even think uh, one of our first callers wants to talk about it as well but um, yeah there's a um, a lot going on on this and I don't think anybody can judge it too early because as, even as the the seismologist said early on, this thing can last for, you know, the eruptions can carry on for a month or more. Well, so, uh, I, in fact, we'll, we'll uh, probably just bring that caller in here in just a second. And in fact, uh, we can probably let me move this. Uh, but first, I do want to remind everyone, if you want to support this show in a different way, uh, remember, we actually have a 
partnerships with different products so you can get a discount and end up helping the show at the same time. Right now, we have a new partnership with My Patriot Supply. Uh, you're able to get short and long-term survival food, water filtration, air purification, survival gear, cooking gear, tools, power, lighting, stoves, fuel, lighters, first aid, medical, anything uh, as far as survival books you get discounts on. And then, of course, right now, you can get uh, a month of food for $50 off or three months of food for as much as $200 off. Uh, if there was any a better time to have extra stuff, it would be right now. Obviously, everybody knows what happened at the beginning of CV with the stores. Uh, now, the world is heading into just basically a, a mystery darkness. So, if you do want to help us in the, at the same time as save, make sure to go over there and check it out. Uh, I, you, I don't need to really recommend this stuff. People know that they need to do this. Uh, this way you get to do it and help out a favorite channel. And remember, they have everything. I mean, they even have emergency radios. Uh, they have uh, iodine pills. Basically anything you would need to prepare for a disaster. Marfuglenews.com slash prep. Make sure to go over there. Uh, again, it helps us. If you want to see us around in a year, uh, this would be a good thing to do. All right, uh, Dex, let's get our first caller, and then I will cover... I moved the uh, the double muscle pigs, <laughs> which isn't insane in the first place afterwards. So let's take the first caller and get them on. Uh, thank you to Sherry Carroll. Trusting God is wisdom, knowing God is peace, loving God is strength, and faith in God is courage. Much love to all. Sherry Carroll, thank you for your support and thank you for the beautiful comment. Jancy Searle says, Hi from Maine, uh, from our houses of veterans, police, and army. Thank you for all you do. Veterans, police, and army. That is awesome. Hey, uh, thank you for your whole household of awesome people who sacrificed uh, for our country. Diane Moses, thank you so much. Delaware Sasquatch, thank you. Taking major hits in crypto and stocks this week. Thanks, China. <laughs> Keep building those empty cities. All right, uh, let's... How are you doing? You are live on Marfugal News. It looks like we have... Uh, it looks like... I'm sorry, we do have a breaking story. We'll talk about that in just a second. It looks like we have an Australia earthquake. Uh, we have the walking carpet uh, galactic review. What is going on? You are live on Marfugal News. Hey, Marfugal. Hello, Fuglers. How are you guys today? Hey, doing great. It's nice to have have some pep in your step. So what's going on? Okay, so like I know we've only got a few minutes. So yes, yes, breaking news is happening in Australia. I'll let you get to that because that's your your forte. It goes along with all the other crazy crap in the world. But uh, the two things, uh, the La Palma situation, uh, with everything flowing as it is now, um, lava and such, uh, we uh, need to keep an eye on the East Coast. Um, any kind of major movements, if you see any museums or whatever starting to move all their gear inward you'll know that this is more of a pending situation. So just kind of, if you're on the East Coast, guys, keep your eyes peeled for starting to move in government-sanctioned areas, all that nonsense, because that could mean that that shelf broke off and incoming, if you know what I mean. So um, that's the short first one. And then the second one is, it kind of goes along with the lady you were talking about a second ago, talking about that God. Oh, yes. Um, the, the, uh, in, in, in Rizrael, as you know, uh, they have what they know as the, uh, the Temple Mount. I'm not going to say it much. Uh, there's an eastern wall involved. Well, on the side of that wall is growing a rose, or I won't say a rose bush, but a, a, a thorny bush. And it just so happens to be spelling out the name of God, the uh, YH, the H uh, anagram thingy. Um, but if you look real carefully at it, you'll actually see that it's the written uh, Hebrew way to write it. And it's starting to form. And the final letter is growing now. I saw that a while back and I was thinking, man. That's pretty cool. And then one of the people in their comment section, she popped it up and she was like, has he talked about that? And I was like, you know what? I don't think he has. I might be wrong, but if not, we're going to talk about it for a second. Because that's kind of, kind of interesting. I mean, you can't get to that area. They couldn't get up there to start growing anything, you know, like planting something. So this is an all natural occurrence. And I just think it's pretty interesting, you know? So explain this picture again. How, how, how does this, uh, what are we looking at again? 
Okay, so if you read it from left to right, the first darkened area is a thorny bush, and it's it spells out the name of God, uh, the Y H V H. And as you'll notice, there's three really visible letters, if you will, and then there's one that's starting to grow to the far right. Well, once that one finishes, it's probably going to look like the second one from the left because they're the same letter. Um, but yeah, it's it's oh, growing there oh naturally, and it's spelling and, the name of God. And and it's in Hebrew. Uh, okay, so I was looking for English it's in letters. Hebrew. Yes, and I can see. Yep. Oh my gosh. And, yep. I and, saw that on the channel a while back, and the guy actually went there to prove it, and it's it's there. It's not a hoax. It's not digital. It's for real growing on the side of the wall. So look at look at the writing above. Do you see how how Hebrew looks? And then when you look at this, uh, this one that whatever symbol this means, uh, I I don't know what part of uh, Jehovah this is, but uh, the first letter that, that is I got you, uh, Murphy, baby. That's insane. The first letter would be Yod, Y O D. The second one is Ha, or He, if you will. The third one is Vad, or Wad, and then the final one growing is going to be another He. So Yad He Vad He. That's incredible. That is really amazing. That that's just too cool. Um, gee, I, I you know I I need to follow this. So this was actually on Twitter that this was posted. I, now this is going to be another uh, another rabbit hole. I don't think we have talked about this. We talked about the temple, but we've not we've not talked about um we have not talked about this at all. So that that's cool. Thank you for bringing that up. Um, hey, glad to my man. You're I do my favorite wanna, dang channel. I, I do want to go. I can do go back to what you said about La Palma. Uh, I thought that was very interesting. What, what, uh, the caller just said, uh, what you just said about the museums. So when you see museums or fine arts, so say on the East coast, they've got a ton of these, uh, incredibly important, uh, museums with historical pieces, uh, for the people that live around those, if you see those being emptied for any reason, just in general, that would also be a sign of anything from uh, a disaster coming to, uh, say, a conflict. Before WW2, they tried to hide a lot of the art uh, in several different countries. And we learned a lesson in that conflict. Uh, they, you know, they said if we ever get into a conflict like WW2 again, that they would need to preserve a lot of the world's art. Um, and they would not do what they did last time. We lost a ton of art. Uh, you know, hundreds of years old in uh, world, you know, world conflict too. So that's a really good point to make. Yeah, if government personnel starts to flock away, we know that something is going astray. Well, it uh, it we're getting closer and closer every day, and that that's my opinion. Well, I I appreciate you calling in. Is there one more thing you want to say before you go? If you haven't stumbled upon the Marfugal yet, share them everywhere you can. Probably the best news source on the interwebs. Um, you're the reason I got my little channel up and running. I haven't posted in a long time. I've been working seven days a week, and et cetera, et cetera. You know how it goes. But I'll be getting some of this content that I'm talking about now up on there here very, very shortly. Because with what's going on right now, it's it's kind of like, you know, I feel obligated. Because, like, there's some wild stuff going on in the world, man. Yeah, and every day it's getting, well, I guess worse or better, depending on how you look at it. Uh, well, thank you. And what, the, exactly. walk, the Walking Carpet Galactic Review, we have pulled up your channel, and I will make sure to send all of the Fugle fam over. Thank you for, uh, it looks like you have you have really good uh, thumbnails, and you need to put more effort in your channel because I, I know that you've got work and everything else, but anytime you can, put stuff up. This this is like, you know, a lot of people don't know how to get uh thumbnails down that grab people so really cool um i, I love you. love where you're going with this just keep trying though people everybody quits too early or they're not consistent enough even when i was at work i would i would uh do videos in my car or do videos on my break um you know so just keep going you you have to break into uh, a really hard algorithm to break into hopefully we can get you to a thousand 
uh, so you can get started on monetization because without monetization, a lot of the algorithm, a lot of the places, the doors open up when you go there. So it's not just about making money because when you, it's hard to make money on monetiz, uh, monetized ads anyway, but it does open up doors to reaching new people. So I hope everybody goes over and checks out the Walking Galactic uh, Carpet, Walking Carpet Galactic Review. Uh, the link will be on our website as well. If you don't, uh, if you can't search that up here, then make sure to go to our website after the show and then click on that. Well, thank you, uh, the Walking Carpet Galactic Review. I appreciate you calling in. All the loves and hugs, fooglers, keep fooglin' and always be prepared. You never know what comes next. Love you guys. May the force be with you. Mwah! All right. Have a good day. Um, man, uh, what a, look at his thumbs. He just has, I, I want, I want to click on these. Look at this. Murder Hornet 2020. Killer Buzz has arrived. His titles. He's, this guy's, this guy's got it. All right. Uh, let's see here. Back to the mutant double muscle pigs and cows being bred to ward off uh, bacon and beef shortages. <sighs> it says mutant double muscle pigs are being bred to potentially help ward off beef and pork shortages. It says uh, shocking images of supersized farm animals have emerged as scientists reveal selective breeding and genetic mutation behind the monstrous muscles. It says a Belgian breed of cas uh, cattle and Belgian blues have naturally occurring mutation called double muscling, which turns them into beefcakes. And the breed's bodybuilder profile certainly comes at a high price as they often suffer a slew of serious health problems. Uh, this is playing God with animals, and it, I, I think it's kind of disgusting uh, because these animals are just these monstrous things with health issues. They have a lot of... I mean, if you are somebody who is like, a, you know, somebody who's, you know, type PETA, PETA uh, aiming, uh, this is pretty messed up to get a couple extra pounds of food. Uh, they end up living with congestive heart failure, all sorts of stuff. Um, but again, whatever for a, a good tasting burger, right? Or a good tasting uh, slab of bacon. Uh, what do you think about this? Would you uh, eat meat knowing it was done in this way? Or would you uh, want to buy something else? Would you support it? Would you not? Do you care? Do you not? Let me know. Uh, as far as the update, I do want to pull that up one more time. Uh, it, it does look like we had a magnitude 6.0 earthquake strikes near Melbourne, Australia. This is really like I am almost in disbelief about this. Melbourne is the place, and it seems like it's, it's starting to become super coincidental that we're getting these huge earthquakes in these places that have these big controversial things happening. Just yesterday, Melbourne was uh, running through streets. Dex, do you really, wasn't it yesterday that, De uh, that uh, Melbourne people were running through the streets and uh, pushing through lines of police? Was that just yesterday? Yeah, they've been. There's been a lot going on in in Melbourne and and the other major cities in Australia. It 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 makes me wonder. I, I don't know about you guys. Um, I just it's it's like what a way to like shake it up, literally, or maybe it's it's God. <laughs> I don't know, uh, but that's or either way, uh, six point in this place not really a great thing the antipodes the whole world is having these weird earthquakes it seems like we have seasons of earthquakes a couple of years ago we had a really bad season i guess uh where it was just like we were covering 7.0 9.0 8 or uh 8.2 you know 7.8 just these massive earthquakes 6.0 is a huge earthquake anything over six is big so again that was breaking news uh thank you for uh everybody that was popping that into uh dust a dust if you see a robbery in an apple store does it make you an eye witness eye witness that's like an iphone that is pretty good uh dust a dust thank you you uh, own the title of dad joke for the day uh 
let's see. Delaware Sasquatch says, taking major hits in crypto. I got that one. Okay, thank you, Delaware Sasquatch. Stephen McMahon, thank you for being the last one out last night. Cywon Klutz 12, thank you for subscribing. Jerry Petros, welcome to the Fugal Fam. Over on DLive, we have an amazing amount of awesome people over there. Lisa K23. Thank you for dropping in a bunch of diamonds. Can we love mob sweet, savory words? Gloria reads. I thought we already did love mob them, but I, um, if, is that Gloria? Is that, uh, I will have to check it out. Uh, but, but Lisa K, I, I trust you. I will have to check it out and we could officially do it on in another episode. Can we love mob sweet, savory words? Gloria reads. Uh, Lisa K, I will make sure to check it out, and then we can put it on tomorrow's show. Meet Puppet 007, L.A. Pluma, La Pluma, is still going off. Shoot out to the all. Meet Puppet 007, and then Queen BTP says, love y'all, stay safe. Hey, thank you, El Luna 3377, making an entrance with a Ninja Gini. I appreciate that. Uh, that is, again, a really high compliment to pay someone on DLive. And then NK says U.S. submarine deal and Indo-Pacific alliance could trigger nuclear arms race. Well, what, what do they not say? This is, of course, coming from the South China Morning Post, one of the mouthpieces of the Chinese government. It says NK's uh, foreign ministry on Monday said that a new U.S. alliance in the Indo-Pacific and recent U.S. submarine contract with Australia could trigger a nuclear arms race in the region. Last week, the United States announced a new three-way security pact with Austra Australia and Britain as part of a strategic partnership under which U.S. nuclear submarines will be supplied to Canberra. These are extremely undesirable and dangerous acts which will upset the strategic balance of the Asia-Pacific region and trigger off a chain of nuclear arms race. That was NK State Media, KCNA, uh, of course, quoting a foreign ministry official as saying, it says, quote, this shows that the U.S. is the chief culprit uh, toppling the international nuclear non-proliferation system, said a foreign news section chief at the Ministry Department of Press Information. So um, again, it says on Wednesday, just a reminder, uh, nuclear armed NK fired off two missiles into the sea with Seoul successfully test firing a submarine launched ballistic missile hours later, becoming only the seventh country in the world with the technology. So the seven blunders of the world, you could say. That was bad. On another note, though, so look at what they're what what that pact was. If you were not around last week for when we were covering this pact. Uh, Australia, U.S., and U.K. are doing this submarine pact, and they are sharing defensive information. Why are they doing it? Well, one, the submarine pact, somebody pointed out, and I did look into it, and that is one, uh, 100%, uh, at least the statement could be very true, the deal with France, where Australia was going to get their submarines and different things from France, uh, could have taken upwards of up to 14 years to get their stuff. Some believe that they need it absolutely right now. The U.S. can get them nuclear subs uh, almost instantly. In fact, I talked to a member, somebody who works at one of these uh, manufacturing companies, uh, the ones that make uh, military gear, they make all sorts of uh, submersibles. Uh, this person actually started out cleaning these huge propellers for like $25 an hour, fascinating stuff make a lot of money cleaning just cleaning propellers right uh but now he is upwards and he does uh i guess what what do you do acquiring parts and metals and things like that he says that they have not stopped making these things uh since he got there people were working into the night making submersibles i can take a guess why can you we are making stuff for other countries, and now we have just basically uh, sat down in emergency meetings, which, by the way, that meeting where they did that, Australia called it as an emergency, and they immediately, they went in, and they they uh, they, they didn't even have uh, who was supposed to be at these meetings put together until about uh, 25 minutes before the meeting. They had people flown in, and nobody else knew who else was going to be there. I found out more about that. It was it was just thrown together. Like something happened. 
It was kind of like uh, the Cobra meeting, uh, the the Cobra meeting that went on in uh, in the UK or I believe, yeah, in Europe they did the Cobra meeting. U.S. did this this just defense meeting. All sorts of things are happening, but we're not seeing any of it. This is like the house of cards. This is situation room stuff, and we don't know what the hell's really going on. So we're putting what's publicly available and trying to put the pieces together. So if you have anything that will help, email me at adam at marfuglenews.com. All right, so uh, let's see here. Yeah, pretty pretty scary stuff if you ask me. Uh, the weaponization of Nord Stream 2 has already started. Global market trends surely play a role in explaining the current gas price rally, but the shell game played by the Kremlin is here for everyone to see unless we choose to look the other way, writes Mikhailo Goncor. It says, seven years ago on a misty Thursday morning of 27th of February. I love how they write this like, on a misty Thursday. Dex, you know how much I hate that, right? I've told you that. Like, how much I hate how they, like, did they really do the stereotype? Like, it was a, uh, it was a sunny day with fall leaves falling down. Sorry, I just, seven. It's your favorite. Seven years ago on a misty Thursday? Like, are they, are they a savant? Do they know what the weather was like on that day? Sorry. Okay. All right. I get that they're doing it on purpose. It says, seven years ago on a misty Thursday morning of the 27th of February, the little green men were first spotted in Crimea. 19 days later, the borders of a European nation were changed by force for the first time since WW2, when Russia annexed Ukrainian sovereign territory. When enabled, this blitzkrieg was plausible deniability, skillfully weaponized by the Kremlin to disorient and confuse the transatlantic alliance, a simple act of removing insignia from the uniforms of the invading army, paralyzed decision making, excused inaction, and sowed the seed of discord among allies. Dex, can I pull you in real quick? So, first of all, that is a huge deal that they removed their labels. They didn't, nobody knew who was doing what. It, so why would that work? Is that because they uh, removed their stuff so they didn't know who the, who they were attacking? They didn't want to cause conflict with some country or what was, what was the reason for removing the insignias? Yeah, I'm 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 sorry, I'm lost, Adam. I was on the phone and I don't know what you're talking about. Oh. That's okay. Why would they remove insignias from their uniforms as far as invading a place to confuse? Oh, sure. That's just, you know, to hide hide their identity and not not to look uh like who they are, right? Now, you remember when this happened, they basically what happened is they didn't know uh so do you think that this could apply to many other things as far as like, uh, you know, Fantastic Freddy's, right? Uh, that's kind of the premise of a Fantastic Freddy. It goes back to uh, when the, you know, Adolf actually had some of the Germans dress up as Polish soldiers and then they dressed up, they threw a grenade into a, a school. And then, of course, they the people of Germany said, oh, my God, these people are just absolute, you know, demons. They did this. That's a Fantastic Freddy type thing. So these guys ran in and they took off their insignias and then, of course, uh, went in and nobody knew. They, they didn't know who they were going to conflict with. And if they make the wrong decision, then all of a sudden they've started a, a world conflict with people. And then by the end of it, all of a sudden the whole town or the whole, uh, the whole uh, province or city or whatever it was taken. It says the Kremlin was using the same tried and true formula in a, on a gas conflict against Ukraine and Europe. Red lines have been drawn when the German American statement was issued on July 21st, articulating the Western commitment to respond to the quote, Russian efforts to use energy as a weapon. But as we watch the deliberate squeezing of the European gas markets by its dominant supplier, Gazprom, the hot rhetoric sounds like a hollow treat or a hall of threat. It says this is plausible deniability in action, and some in the West conveniently ignore Gazprom's role for acknowledging it would require a decisive response. 
Since March, the European gas futures have doubled in price and then doubled again, reaching an historic high well ahead of the peak season. Surely the global gas market trends matter, but the shell game played by the Kremlin is here for everyone to see unless we choose to look the other way. If Russia didn't have enough gas to satisfy the European demand, no new pipeline could solve this problem. But that's not the story. Gazprom claims to have increased gas production by 2021 by about 18%. Right now, Ukraine has spare transit capacity roughly twice that of Nord Stream 2, but Gazprom is choosing not to use it. If this is not blackmail, I'm not sure what is. Putin's spokesman Dmitry Peskov could not have been more straightforward with his recent remarks. It says, quote, Undoubtedly, the earliest possible commissioning of Nord Stream 2 will help balance the natural gas prices in Europe. Why is the Kremlin so adamant about this project? Well, it addresses a wide gamut of strategic objectives. Take away Ukraine's leverage, create divisions in the transatlantic alliance, portray Europe as spineless and unprincipled, and maintain post-Merkel continuity in the German-Russian relations. From day one, this pipeline was a classic reflexive control op operation. The choices are framed by the Kremlin in the best tradition of the KGB. So that no matter what Berlin, Brussels, or Washington does, Moscow wins. Now is the time to break this vicious cycle. So we talked about the weaponization of the energy, and basically they're saying exactly what we uh, were talking about and what, what many experts and many people were saying was going to happen. It says predicting the exact Kremlin actions is a fool's errand basically anybody still we can be sure of one thing it will be a hybrid attack shrouded in ambiguity so they grab power they grab uh shipping lanes they grab everything else basically they're grabbing all sorts basically they're covering all of their bases right now and at the same time russia unleashes new top secret satellite killer missile that can blast western targets into space so, if you haven't noticed, yesterday we covered that they just released information that there were boat-mounted lasers that could blind satellites, and now Russia has, of course, a satellite killer weapon. This has been worked on not only by our governments here in the United States, uh, but other governments around the world. Uh, these basically specific weapons uh, made to take down satellites. Satellites are extremely important. If you knock down satellites, you could win a conflict. You could win a world conflict. Especially if you have satellites and they don't. That's bad. It says Russia has announced a successful test of an unnamed new interceptor missile, uh, which the U.S. has warned is capable of destroying Western satellites in new uh, low Earth orbit. The top secret weapon is believed to be designed to protect the Kremlin and key strategic sites around Moscow against air and space attacks. But the U.S. has previously warned that such Russian technological break breakthroughs, uh, quote, the threats to U.S. space systems and their allies are real, serious, and increasing. It comes as Russians today started three days of voting in key parliamentary alert, preceded by unprecedented media curbs and the banning of a slew of opposition candidates. It means parties loyal to Vladimir Putin, who is self-isolating after a CV break and his entourage, are expected to win a clear majority. So, one thing, during this uh, cycle, by the way, they're saying he is... Uh, hiding because of CV, I think that there is threats against his life during this period. Again, he said that they had something in his entourage, right? Somebody got the, the sieve, right? And that he is isolating for that. During this time and this time alone, I bet you that there are actual... Uh, threats against his life so he is either in uh, you know super super top secret uh, placement uh, being protected by armed guards somewhere or he's in a bunker or he's underground or something either that for this area or, or for for this uh, event right here where they're deciding who's in power I don't think that I think that that's all for show to make the Russian people think that you know it it it, it, it 
uh, ended up being him anyways, or, or these other people underneath that he wanted to be in place? Or is there something more, uh, more here? And is there something bigger happening right now? It worries me that Putin is, po- you know, possibly being hidden in a bunker somewhere. What is going on? It makes me think, you know, is Xi Jinping out and about right now? It's a big deal for Putin to be hiding. Do you think he's hiding because of what they say he's hiding for? It makes you makes you wonder. All right, let's bring on the next caller, but first while we're on the subject of nuclear and everything else that's going on right now, we have shown you why we have recommended EMP shields for all of your devices. Anything that basically can be affected by an EMP or by a solar flare or a Carrington level event. So everyone should know that EMP shield is one of the best out there. This is a solution that can protect you against all three phases of an e, uh, EMP, including E1, E2, and E3. It can protect you against solar flares up to 228,000 amps. Again, the natural kind, which we are overdue for. And, uh, of course, you will end up getting a huge discount when you do so. If you don't want to be stuck somewhere after an EMP and you want your car to run you and, uh, again, get you home, then I would highly recommend putting one of these in. Uh, the car model is one of the most popular. It can be put in in a matter of minutes by anyone. Go to marfuglenews.com slash EMP right now. You can get $50 off per device, and that stacks on top of any sale that they are currently running. We are grandfathered in. This is the same company that is outfitting com- uh, agencies like DHS, DOD, and, of course, the Demso team helping protect the Texas grid. Again, you can get devices for pretty much anything uh, that you want to keep running. Your boats, your motorcycles, uh, of course, your solar system, your home, your cars, your RVs, even your ham radios. Again, go check it out. It's marfuglenews.com slash EMP. All right, uh, let's get our next caller, and then we'll talk about the Navy subtests unarmed Trident 2 missiles off of Cape Canaveral. It looks like we have on the line... Michael, Michael, Volcano is in Alaska. Hey, I'm uh, a long-time listener um, on your show. Love you very much. Um, i got a few things to share. Um, I'm not adding more stuff about it as I think about it. Like, I guess you did a story about the volcano in Alaska. I didn't hear about that part. But it's in red alert right now. Uh, it's about to go off any time. Don't know when. Um off that small island. I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, it says my something. Um, that's what the like it says in red alert. Um, the other thing I'd like to share is to have people go to a website. Um, it's about, it is the Friends of the Constitution, uh, founder of the Friends of the Con- original Constitution. People need to go there. You know, there was a, uh, a lawsuit made in July of what's going on. I don't know if that's going to actually win or not, but they said you could become a plaintiff on what's going on, what the federal government did to us. Um, won't go into details too much on it. Um, also, I saw a video. It is on a bed shoot as by Dr. James P. Wickstrom back in 2015 uh, when the black guy that was in the White House <laughs> It was in office. Uh, they planned to force people to get the day in the arm uh, at that point in time. And of course, I know I can go into details again on that, unfortunately. Um, also, a long time ago, I seen a UFO here in Wichita, Kansas, over the airport. You know, I used to live in my apartment complex. It was pretty good size. Um, a UFO. It was uh, kind of like the third kind UFO, but not with the little antennas on top of it kind of thing, but it was a double side window kind of thing, like window on top of window kind of thing with grid kind of thing. And um, I saw, I heard about the A-10 theory that uh, on Bishop Channel basically is used for crowd control. Um, and not sure what the crowd control is going to be on us. Osley or 
or against our enemies, um, as well as Mr. B. Uh, Marie filed a, articles of impeachment into the, I think the House or Senate, uh, not too long ago. Sorry, you kind of rolled from one thing to, you went from UFO to A10 Warthogs to impeachment. Hi. Sorry. Well, I know you got like a five minute deal. So I know, I know. And I, I could tell you're putting 10 calls into, into one. Um, no, that's okay. What, what do you mean? Um, as far as the UFO experience, uh, it's crazy how many people that call in that it, almost everybody has seen something they can't explain. As far as the A10 warthogs, what do you what do you, what did you say about that? You thought uh, a person says used for crowd control. Oh, so I just oh. know what side they're on. I don't know if they're against us or or the enemies like you know the people just came in across the border you know i don't know you know that kind of deal i get you well as far as a, like, a, 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 for crowd control <laughs> a10 warthogs for crowd control th those things have 50 cows uh it has a 50 cow uh chain oh, chain thing on the front and you, and you can't shoot them down <laughs> that would be like crowd deletion right, you can go through that would be like crowd elimination. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. You had no problems on that issue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would hate to be on that side. <laughs> I was like, I hate to be on that side. You can't, there's nowhere to hide in your cars, nothing. I mean, you go through armor, you know, like, okay, oh, yeah. you're in trouble. <laughs> and the speed that I, I guess the the speed of the plane too when when it's it actually adds punch to it so I mean uh, when an A10 warthog hits an armored vehicle even it can uh, it, it can flip a vehicle it, I mean it's all it's pretty crazy so well Michael you fit a lot into the, your call I, have, I appreciate that um, so on right, another, I'm sorry that no that's okay that's okay that might want forget uh, that might want forget later you know what I mean. So as far as for we covered the Alaska uh, volcano yesterday, uh, th the fact that it's that they're saying it's at red alert uh, does not surprise me. I I talked to uh, a Fugel family member up there and they said they are extremely worried about it. So we're covering it. Uh, we we will probably go live if if something really bad happens. Pretty scary. Yeah, and I also heard about your story about the. Of course, I saw it today as well. The uh, you know, the Italy volcano, of course, if I heard if it from another person that that does fall into the ocean, we're in trouble because it, if a huge land mass comes in, that will cause a tidal wave over here. There's yeah. no, doubt, no doubt about it. Oh, yeah. And no, no and, and the, the people saying it's debunked, there there's no official debunk. It's just that they think it's unlikely that it will happen. There's no debunk. It can't happen. I don't know why they said it was debunked in 2017. That was before it even erupted again. So, anyways, um, well, thank you, Michael, for calling in. All right. Also, uh, I do a mouth harp kind of deal. I know you like to do music and stuff like that. I don't know how I would send you a clip on. I know make it as part of beats or not. I don't know how you know. I have to get probably a good microphone or something like that. But how about I send you that clip? You know, that way you can use it for your beats or something like that. Well, I I don't I I just kind of would love to have a, a sample of mouth harp. <laughs> uh, well, please send it to me at adamatmorefuglenews.com and put mouth harp in the subject. It's an interesting okay. uh, it's an interesting uh, instrument. So I would love to sample the sounds and use them. So uh, appreciate it. Right. All right. All right. Well, I'm kind of beginner. Kind of beginner. So so I'm kind of experiment with it. That's awesome, Michael. Well, thank you so much for calling in, and it, it's nice uh, meeting you. It's okay, me calling in time. All right, well, thank you so much. Michael, nice meeting you. Have a wonderful night. Be safe, be prepared, and marf out. That was Michael from Kansas. Um, again, why are we testing uh, Navy sub-test missile, a Trident missile again? All of these things are happening. It's non-stop. Uh, it's basically non-stop drills. We've had the largest drills in the world in history uh, just recently in 18 different time zones. 
the U.S., U.K., Australia. You have, of course, Europe drilling like crazy. You have South Korea. You have N.K. You have China drilling. You have Russia drilling. You have every country in the world drilling for a world conflict. And people still think, oh, it will go up to the peak and it will just come right back down. It will be a car on a hill. It will stop at the stoplight and then it will just roll backwards. It's not going to this time. Look at what is happening. The dollar is about to collapse. They have printed more money in the last two years than they have ever printed in history. Our entire structure of our planet is about to be flipped on its head. So this is why we tell you guys to get ready. Again, now it's at the point where they're looking for people that are too ready. So it should be a sign to you that that means you should be ready for anything, whether it be your power going out a couple days, a couple weeks, or a couple years. Everybody should be putting certain things to the side. As far as this goes, uh, more tests, more ballistic missile tests. It's, it's every country in the world is doing something right now. The missiles were fired from the USS Wyoming submarine fired uh, from an Ohio class ballistic missile submarine home ported at Kings Bay, Georgia Dex. So this was actually fired uh, in Georgia, correct? Well, no, it was fired uh, in Cape Canaveral, which would be just South of Georgia. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. It was home yeah, ported. But that's probably where they're based is in Georgia. So they're there. Would that not be crazy? The only thing I was thinking of is like the, the show Jericho or something in the beginning scenes of that show it, or in any number of movies where they show the nukes coming out of like Kansas farms, right? Because they've, they've got all these nukes that are uh, not only in submarines to see it come out of the water, that would be insane. Uh, but also to see it coming out of a silo in Kansas or anywhere. Could you imagine that has always been my worst nightmares is like looking in a grass field and then seeing doors open up and you see missiles launch. Would that be not the most terrifying sight to see ever? Because you know exactly what they are. Yeah, I could I could only imagine what it would, you know, whether you see them coming out of the ground uh, where you don't expect them to or whether you see them coming out of the water where you don't expect them to. It's got to be uh, a chilling sight. Well, either way, uh, I wonder if, you know, when they when they launch these things, it's it's creepy. By whatever means possible, Chinese owners takeover of Taiwan imminent, asserts regime flack. It says a top advisor to several Chinese party affiliated think tanks, as well as a New York based Asia society, gave a stern warning to those opposing a Chinese party takeover of Taiwan. He suggested that the regime will pursue the policy by whatever means possible. Speaking with LBZ presenter Matt Frey, Victor Gao declared, quote, nothing in the world can stand in the way of the unification of China, adding the goal would be accomplished through preferably peaceful means. But if not peaceful means, whatever means possible. It says unification of China is a must, he adds. This is a stern warning to whoever in Taiwan who will oppose the reunification in Gao, who is the vice president of the Chinese party linked center for China and globalization and an advisor to several other Beijing linked influence groups such as the Beijing Energy Club and the China Energy Security Institute. It says Gao has also has a presence in the U.S. serving as a member of Asia Society Global Council and a former vice pres at Morgan Stanley Asia. The National Pulse has previously exposed the Asia Society for influencing curricula and personnel in American schools to align with social justice and globalism, reaching up to 4 million students and 100,000 educators. When asked about America's response to the Chinese Communist Party uh, attempting to overtake Taiwan, Gao cautioned, quote, Wake up! No American leaders who will want to shed blood of American soldiers for the unification of China. Basically, they are saying that they're going to... Go, I, I, they're, I want to, uh, Is he in, uh, asserting that there won't be any conflict because they're just going to take it uh, and nobody's going to step in? 
Is that is that what you get from this Dex, or or what do you feel mm. like he's saying? No, I, I think you know there's a chance that they think that if they decide to roll in, that everybody will just you know bow down and and you know take the knee, right? But I don't think that that's the reality. I think the reality is if they try to roll in, something is going to happen, some skirmish. I don't know if it'll go full on or if it'll just be an isolated event there in Taiwan. In other words, will everyone else get involved or not? And, I, I don't you know, think Japan is going to take it. Japan is fierce. I mean, J J the Japanese culture and the Japanese, uh, the, the honor that comes with Japanese culture, uh, they are fiercely, uh, you know, they, they basically, they know if Taiwan gets taken, Japan could be a target down the road. I don't yeah, think people I, realize that. Yeah, I, I I will can't imagine it's just going to be a steamroll like we saw in in Hong Kong, right? I I really think that if this goes to the next step, it's going to be big. Well, could people compare Hong Kong and, and Taiwan, two different scenarios. Hong Kong had this kind of somewhat agreement, and they were going to slowly switch uh, switch over. They were there was kind of agreements already made. This and it was supposed to happen later than it did, and then they just went and just come compacted it took out all kind of the free leading thinkers slash leaders and then boom well what's interesting about that is it really one of the ways they did it was through elections right they they were able to infiltrate the elected officials to be pro china uh uh politicians right so by infiltrating that system and then getting enough people into the into power then they were able to to move rules around how they wanted it to in their favor so they, you know, sometimes, sometimes conflict goes without actually pulling triggers. It's other things, you know, like infiltrating governments and infiltrating, uh, the voting events and infiltrating the actual, it sounds, of it countries. sounds familiar. Doesn't it? Without a shot fired. Uh, so I don't know. It, it it's just like this is insane. Dex, do you want to go over the Haitian migrants revolting in custody? Yeah. So apparently, um, a lot of the folks coming across uh, from Mexico are from Haiti. I don't know how they got to Mexico. I'm sure via a boat, uh, but. It, apparently and a large number of them were in a uh a government uh bus and they took control of that bus and then used it to uh to actually break out of the bus and escape i don't know how far they took it but they basically got out um they were on, in transport and they basically took over the bus and then they got out and took off that's kind of crazy event when you think about it now why are these haitians here why what I, of course, Haitians, uh, Haiti's leader was taken down. Uh, in fact, he was very... And they had that devastating earthquake, too. And they had the devastating earthquake. Uh, the, the leader was taken out in his sleep, or uh, they raided his house, and they took out the leader. Um, he just happened to be the fifth person in about five months. Uh, in fact, like the only five countries that said, we're not doing the thing that everybody's doing, right? And... Uh, all five of those leaders either got replaced or permanently deleted. And then, uh, of course, they said that the people that did that operation went into his palace and took him out. Happen happened to have connections with a Florida man. You know, because if Florida man doesn't show up in enough articles, right? Florida man, 78 does. Blah, blah. Florida man takes out the Haiti leader, right? Or somebody that had Florida connections, right? And then these guys from Haiti, which of course did have the earthquake, so I guess they could be refugees from that, in a bus for Texas, which again, Texas is where we're thinking that uh, there might be some fishiness going on because if 100 get through and maybe they're trying to sneak somebody in that's part of an operation, this would be a good time to do it, right? Especially if you had help from our own government or CIA and CIA uh, say, hey, Border Patrol, uh, we have official business here. We need to bring some people in or uh, well, we're uh, looking for somebody. Uh, but 
you know, we have jurisdiction. We need you to just leave because this is top secret. And then come on in, guys. Come on in. And then uh, maybe the Hades, Haitians uh, get the smell that they're about to be taken out into the desert or something. So they take control of the thing and take it over. Don't know. I'm just throwing out a wild, crazy thing. Maybe they're well, like, the stories coming out of out of that uh, the scenes that we showed a few shows ago in Del Rio. I mean, that's where this started. So where the drones, uh, yeah, the drone shot and uh, the other uh, person who wrote a, wrote a statement saying like you know this small town had nothing and now boom, it's like a, a military zone. Um, yeah, it's this is where they're coming from and and I and I apparently I don't know what the percentage is, but a, a large if not a a huge percentage of the the 10 or 11,000 people that were there are from Haiti. What the hell is going on? This is just so just, this is like a movie every single day. It's absolutely incredible. Uh, Daniel Mardson, thank you for subscribing again. Thank you. Uh, M swords. Thank you for your support. I appreciate you. Uh, Stephen McMahon says either bug out on a bike or put a bike in your trunk. There will be massive traffic jams. Uh, that is one thing that I have actually said myself. I've thought about one of those older gas powered scooters that go 20 miles an hour. Think about that. If it folds up and fits in a trunk. Uh, I, uh, I was with, with my, uh, wife one day and I told you guys, I, I kind of freaked her out. I, I did the, um, the, the, it was a YouTube video that had the nuclear announcement. It's like, this is not a test, blah, blah, blah. And it, it sounds like a real alert. Um, I jokingly did that in traffic and freaked her out for a second. Then, But then we had a real conversation. Like, if we were on in stuck traffic, cannot move, we're stuck in between, we're in the middle lane, uh, four-way highway, which where where we were, we were like, what if that was a real alert? What if over the radio it said, you know, you have 45 minutes? This was around the same time that Hawaii did its thing, right? If that happened, what are you going to do? Are you going to hop out and walk? There's no way you're walking out of range of a, a nuke. So I thought of back then, you know, getting a, a gas-powered scooter or something or multiple, having them gassed up and in the trunk. Or get a roof rack that could have them, pull those down. Of course, you could always have somebody uh, jack you for it. Somebody could punch you off of it. But man, I'm I'm saying uh, that's why we moved away from the city. Part of that reason we talked about it multiple times. We were in the city, then we moved a little bit further, then we moved even further because Cascadia is gonna tear up the whole uh, West Coast, and it's not like a far off thing. It's coming. It's overdue. Military think that it was supposed to happen already. So, as far as uh, all of everything that's going on i hope people think about think creatively like stephen mcmahon uh if you're in the city get some way to get out because you do have a chance it's stupid to never to just think oh i'm here so i'm just dead meat it never hurts to try uh let's see and then we have dust a dust thank you kenyan armstrong says la palma is triggering another volcano in in alaska so we did uh we covered that yesterday as well it very well could be that could be the, the antipode or i guess the trigger from that uh but very scary if that if that alaska one if both of them go off super super big uh it could really screw up everything Silva Garza, thank you so much for your support. Uh, oh, wise Al, I believe I missed you in the beginning. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. Uh, I appreciate your support. And then Machina Opus, Jancy Searles, Diane uh, Moses again, uh, and Christine Rystead. Thank you. Thank you for uh, the $20 super chat or the super sticker, and uh, thank you for supporting Independent. Okay, and then... Kelly2334, don't think I missed you. I appreciate you and everyone else that supports. The end is near is here. I, uh, thank you so much. You always pop in. Your name sticks out so much. I uh, Awesome. Uh, Divine1122, you're amazing. Light of love, everyone, says Divine1122. I am so glad to be part of the Fugle family, said the end is near. Uh, Lady Green Eyes, what is going on? It's nice to see you again. And then Kelly2334, thank you for going above and beyond. Thank you for uh, doing a Ninja Guinea over on uh, DLive. Thank you for supporting Independent. Jacktronics says, love all of you Fugle fam, Dex Mods, Wives. 
uh, and kids and all. Thank you for thinking about that too. Uh, Dex, we have we have some pretty savage web only content today. Uh, yeah, we let's, do. And let's you get our phone call first, two, real quick. Yeah, so let's get our phone caller in, and then uh, we'll go over some of that. Okay. It looks like we have Michael, aka Ferret Dad. Michael, you are live on Marfugal News. How you doing tonight? We're doing good. So how how can are you? Can you hear me? Yeah, we can all hear you. We're good. Michael, is there a, is there a okay. delay? Yeah, I'm sure. I don't like this delay. <laughs> That's okay. We're going to just let you talk. I'm probably going to interrupt you by the time you get this, but uh, just go ahead and, and talk about what you needed to talk about. I'll pull up any relevant links, okay? Okay. Uh, I wanted to talk about Camp Atterbury. Uh, there is... It's not in the news. 49 of them escaped, and uh, they stole some of the, you know, the military bang bangs. And uh, 25 out of six, 6,000 or 6,600 is legal, just the 25 of them. Uh, they're taking car antennas and license plates and making them into weapons. And uh, in the link. If you see where they uh, talked to Hammer and Nigel, they, that several people emailed them videos and pictures of them guys leaving uh, brown Snickers all over the place and, you know, doing stuff like that. And the uh, campsites that was around uh, the Camp Atterbury where people went down there to go camping, they've been robbed and assaulted and everything else down there. And my mom has told me that you know, you won't see this in the news, but my mom's friend, her son or grandson works at Camp Atterbury, Atterbury and he's the one that was telling her about the 49 of them that escaped and took the military bang bangs from the military. And, you know, they're taking license plates and bending them up into knives and, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. So I want to just warn people, if you live around these areas, that these people are from not the United States that just to be careful, be cautious and keep your head on a swivel. And on top of that, I here a couple months ago, I have bought myself the EMPs shields for them for my vehicles and one for my house. And we're getting ready to move to out in the country and we're going to be, uh, prepared. We're getting prepared for this. Now, do you think, uh, did, does anybody around you think that you are just a little bit off for, say, going above and beyond, moving out to the country, preparing for these things? Um, some of my neighbors are and some of them are not. Uh, some of them are on board with me and they're like, hey, you know, if stuff like this happened, can we come out there to your place? And I said, sure. Well, I... Yeah, the thing is, is you know, this has been a debate is like if you tell your friends and family or um, or should you take in everyone, right? Uh, I know that there is a good chunk of people that say, you know, I'll help as many people as I can. Uh, but then there's the other side where it's like, well, we have so many, you know, items. We have so much food for so many people. Uh, we, what would you do if, if, if somebody came in and said, Hey, I, I don't have anywhere to go. Would you take them in? Well, when, when this does happen, the people that think we're crazy, they're all going to be turning to their friends who are preppers and this and that. And of course they're going to, they're going to want to, uh, basically take advantage of, of the prep that everybody else, including us have done. And, you know, some people's view is like, even though they think you're crazy, take them in. I, I would love to get a, a kind of a, a, I guess, a, a survey on everybody here. A lot of people right now are actually thinking the same thing as you, 
but people are afraid to admit it because now they have made anyone who is a prepper into something extreme or something this. That's not that's not on accident. So I'm glad that you're, you know, doing uh, responsible things. We'll just say that. Okay, from my perspective on helping out people, I am only telling a handful of few people that I know and trust. And, you know, then I'm going to leave it in God's hands at that point in time what he wants me to do. If uh, somebody does get sent to me, and I'm way, this this property I'm buying is way off the beaten path. So if uh, they come to my door, I'll help them out. But you know, if I get a bad five, which I've got a good you know six cents about that, then I will give them a little bit and say, "There you go, you're on your way." Well, I, I hear you there. Uh, as as far as the uh, the situation with the this camp Atterbury. Uh, what's crazy is think about the people that are being pulled in. They're from a t completely different culture, completely different country. Uh, some of the areas that are affected, we're talking third world. Uh, col I mean, people go there and they go, go in shock, culture shock, where they go, oh, my gosh. Uh, places in the world where you don't drive through an area because you will be robbed and taken of your car. Uh, there's currently areas in... in uh, well, a different example, say an area like South Africa right now, which is going through riots, looting, uh, people basically, you know, in the streets, perished in the streets everywhere. Uh, they're they're uh, upheaving over their leader right now. Though there are people from countries like that that are now being pulled in into a totally different world. Uh, what the statement being right here, it says it's ap absolutely disgusting what I'm saying. Uh, I would highly recommend, we're going to link this. It says, later adding that some refugees are stealing license plates and antennas from vehicles to craft makeshift weapons. Quote, there have been shank fights, the source wrote. We have been told to keep a vigilant eye out because refugees were able to obtain knives at the post exchange when they arrived. That is incredible. And uh, if it's true, again, take everything with a grain of salt. Uh, we'll, we'll see what happens with this and if this comes... Uh, comes to light or if they they uh, hide it they're gonna hide it you know as well as I do <laughs> they don't want to get people upset and everything else yep absolutely uh, well but th uh, th but with me I know I can I, I can understand what you're saying is about the uh, you know uh, culture shock and everything sounds like the east side of Indianapolis yep yeah. Oh, yeah. No, no, there's plenty of it. Well, uh, thank you, a.k.a. Fair Dad, and uh, I appreciate you. Again, a sec second Michael tonight. I appreciate you calling in. I appreciate you talking to me and have, like I said, like you always say, keep, everybody keep your head on a swivel. It is, I just have a bad feeling something's going to happen in less than probably six months. That's just my feeling. And, you know, they, you know, that's why we're getting moved out there and, and getting the other two properties sold and getting everything we needed out there, generators and solar. I've got all that stuff, and, you know, I'm just going to hook it up when I get out there. And, you know, it's, like I said, you can see people coming from a mile away. So, Well, I don't blame you. And, uh, uh, again, there's a lot of people in our audience that are in the same boat, and they're doing the same things. And you, even if they're not, uh, they're, they wish they had the ability to. So that is awesome. Well, th thank you so much for calling in tonight. Michael, a.k.a. Ferret Dad, I uh, appreciate you so much. And don't be a stranger, okay? All right. All right. Thanks, sir. All right. Have a good night. That was Michael, a.k.a. Ferret Dad, uh, from Indiana, I believe. Yes, that was Indiana. And then uh, Dex, let's – There, there's some – you're gonna attach this on the website, correct? Or is or can we? Uh, uh, which oh, it's already there. It's a the, PDF, the, right? Yeah, it's under Michael's name, under just, Fair, Michael okay. AK Fair. I, I didn't know if it was some weird file because it's showing up as a. Uh, drop. It didn't format correctly, so the link to the original is there for everyone else to see. But for you to show it on on air, I didn't want to have it, ads popping yeah, up yeah, everywhere. Yeah. You know how we do that. 
So, hey, um, if you haven't heard and you, you've just crawled out of a rock for some strange reason, there is an entire set of content that's still on our website that you need to go check out. And it's called Web Only Content, uh, also known as Too Hot for TV. So just go to morefuglenews.com, click on the thumbnail for this show, and then scroll down and you will find everything else. Uh, we've got uh, stories. You know, there's something here really, really big from the uh, the whole uh, CV topic that happened 18 months prior uh, that a lot of pretty salacious claims that are being made there. Um, we've seen some other nurses and what they've been talking about. And we also have uh, plenty of uh, political rhetoric being thrown around uh, on all sides of the aisle. So go check it out. Go to marfuglenews.com. Click on the thumbnail for the show. Scroll down to web only content that's now highlighted really big in orange. You can't miss it. I said blue, by the way. But yellow, orange works too. I yeah, like maybe it. tomorrow it'll be blue. We'll see. No, no, no. I actually think the I think what what you did looks great. Uh, that totally sticks out, and it's easy to for to scroll and see. So, thank you, Dex. Um, you he Dex is like that. You, I'll, I'll even mention something, and then all of a sudden there'll be a, a Excel spreadsheet on it, or. I'll uh, I'll say, oh man, I wonder what the weather's like, and then I'll look, and it's like, oh, Monday through Friday. Dex is amazing, uh, just an amazing guy, super smart. Thank you, Dex. Thank you for everything you do uh, for the Fugle family. Appreciate you. Great show. Much love, Adam. And uh, again, in the future, in a, in a couple weeks, I know that uh, uh, basically you you may be doing some stuff uh, with your wife. We might actually be doing kind of a show with our mods. There's some cool stuff that's uh, going to happen in, in the future. So stay tuned. I, I want to get everybody together and uh, have you guys meet our mods. Uh, we have uh, particularly everybody is going through really crazy times right now. So we're going to do some fun stuff coming up as well. I know that it's all freaky and everybody... everybody uh, uh, you know, it, it's gonna. We're gonna have some cool things too. On top of that, I highly, highly recommend. Make sure you guys are following everything that's going on on that uh, web only. So thank you everybody for supporting tonight. Thank you on D Live for the massive support. Uh, especially thank you Kelly two three three four. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Lisa K twenty three Green Queen, Queen BTP. Everybody that went over and supported over there. Uh, Scooby Doo Doo Right Bear Claws. Uh, everybody that ended up gifting uh, Marfia badges tonight. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you everybody with the purple badge. Awesome guys. Thank you. Uh, and then uh, yeah, Hoppinson Bear Claws. Everybody over there. Thank you. Uh, it is now officially time for a shout row. It's not an outro. It's not a shout-out. It's a shout row.
Make me a also a slave. I know, Michelle. 